Hello everyone. So a little while ago, I created a tutorial on how to create low poly fur in Blender. And for the most part, I think it went pretty well, but there was always something that bothered me about it. And that was the hair particles. You had no real way to control the way they came out of the mesh. And when you're using uh, flat hair particles, like the one we have here, uh, the grain that they establish when they come out of the head is really important. Uh, you want them all lined up in the same direction. And uh, with Blender, with the default way uh, it comes out of the head using the particle instance modifier, it's essentially random. And as far as I know, there is no way for the user to control that with the uh, tools that are available in Blender uh, 9.1 as it stands. So what I decided to do was download the source code and uh, hack around a bit to see if I could come up with the solution from the inside. So I did that and after getting Blender to compile and after uh, figuring out the right part of the uh, code to modify, I came up with my own solution. So what you're actually seeing here is Blender running in, in debug mode with my uh, changes to it. And I'm gonna run through and show you the changes I made to the particle instance modifier. So uh, now we have the hair particle selected here. Let's add a particle instance modifier. And we're going to select our particle system as before. And we're going to up the amount so we can see all those hair particles uh, from where they emerge on the head. Now we're going to uh, create these along the paths so that they follow the hair particle paths. And we are also going to um, select children so that uh, we follow the children instances coming off the head. All right, so, so far not any different from how you would do this ordinarily. But uh, let's look at the back of the head and we can start to see the problems here. Let's actually turn the amount down a little bit. So the problem here is that you'll notice that on one part of the head, on the left part over here, those hair particles are more or less going parallel with the ground, which is what we want. But then all of a sudden, they you, we get a 90 degree turn and they're now coming out almost like you know, the blade of a knife. And that's not what we want. We especially don't want it because we have no control over it. So what can we do about that? Well, what I did is I created this extra uh, field here called UV layer. And what this does is it reads a UV set that you create on your source model here. You go down to the um, UV areas. You can see I have uh, two UV maps. Uh, I'll show these to you a bit later. But uh, we can use that information on our uh, particle instance modifier here to set the grain. So let's take the first set here. You can see that snapped right away. And you can see these hair particles are now parallel to each other. And if we boost the hair count, we now get a very nice fur texture with uh, far fewer particles and far fewer uh, strange hairs going off in strange directions. Now, how does this work, you might be asking? Well, let's click on this guy and take a look at the um, UV sets. So let's go into edit mode and let's take a look at the UV editor. And uh, let's select all. So, uh, oh, that's the wrong set. Let me switch back to grape here. So this is the default UV set that you get on the monkey model when you create it. And as you can see here, I believe this bit at the top here uh, represents the back of the head. You can see uh, these lines, these horizontal lines are mostly horizontal. Uh, and those correspond to the x-axis. If I click on the hair particle over here, oops, and if I temporarily disable that, so here's the hair particle. And you can see that the base of the hair particle, we have an x-axis and a z-axis. Uh, and if we go back into edit mode over here, the x-axis of the hair particle corresponds to the x-axis in your UV set, and the z-axis on the particle corresponds to the y-axis on the UV set. 
So you can basically uh, rotate the direction that your hair particles are coming out of uh, just by messing around with the UVs over here. So for, and um, to give you an example, uh, here is the orange UV set. I've just pretty much taken the first, the default UV set and rotated it 90 degrees. So if we come back over here, and uh, let's re-enable that. So if you look at the green here in the back and we change that to the other UV set, you can see those hair particles are now pointing in different directions. They're now uh, more edge on rather than uh, flat on. But you've still got that nice comfortable green because um, in the UV editor, they're going mostly in the right direction. So let's put that back over here in grape mode. And uh, if we put our uh, fuzz back on our monkey, uh, make that a zero. And let's come over here. Let's hide those hair particles. You can see that we have a uh, nice low poly fur for a much reduced fur count, but uh, we can uh, boost the particle count there. But uh, that's a way to uh, do fur uh, with uh, the uh, new changes with that new field that I added to the particle instance um, plugin. Now, uh, with Blender, so uh, there's no way to actually download this. This isn't like a uh, an add-on that you can add on. This is actually changing Blender source code. So I've created a patch for this and I've submitted it to the Blender Foundation. And I'm gonna post a link to the website there if you're interested in going and taking a look at it. So uh, the Blender people might decide to incorporate this into the Blender engine in a uh, future upcoming release. So far, I haven't heard back from them, so I don't know what's happening. Uh, I did read something in the uh, Blender notes that the current hair particle system is sort of at a end of life stage right now, which I think means they're going to try replacing it with a completely new system. So they might decide they don't want this patch because of that. On the other hand, I have no idea what's going on with this replacement hair system or how actively it's being worked on or how soon they're going to fix things. So in any case, uh, if you want to use this new feature, I guess if you're technically minded, you could download Blender and compile it yourself and put my patch on top of it, or maybe just uh, keep watching the bug and uh, seeing if they decide to act on this or not. But uh, in any case, I think I learned a lot, certainly being able, able to uh, Compile and uh, Hack Blender was uh, an interesting adventure, and uh, maybe good things will come of this. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching, and uh, thanks for coming along.